Hello? Okay. So um, I'm going to be introducing Alexander Hendor for this talk. Um, so Alexander Hendor is responsible for data and artificial intelligence at the Bounty Consultancy Hanswag in Germany. He has many years of many years of experience in the practical application, introduction, and communication of data and AI-driven strategy and decision-making processes. Through, through his commitment as a speaker and chair of various international conferences, such as Honkai D, Han Data Berlin, he is a proven expert in the field of data, data intelligence. He's been appointed Python Software Foundation and Euro Python fellows for this very for his various contributions. And yeah, so this talk is about ten years of community organizer. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Vincer. Uh, yeah, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here speaking to you. Thanks thanks for joining this talk. Uh, it's great to be here at Pi Data New York. Uh, in this talk, I want to give you like a deep dive into uh, my community experience of the past 10 years. Yeah, it's unbelievable how fast 10 years can go by in the community. And I'm going to want to give you like an, an overview, want to give you like, hey, what was my story and what can you learn from my story or what I, did I learned on that journey and I want to share with you. Um, and uh, there's also like a big part of uh, leadership, leadership in communities, how to manage communities, how can you help listen, help other people thrive, enable other people, but also probably learn to listen to other people and uh, yeah, so balance ideas, motivations, and get this amazing community going, which is, I think, still very fascinating. Uh, uh. So um, we're also going to look into some of the boring stuff, like administration, finances, because you know, there's like a conference, there's bill to, bills to be paid, the re reimbursement to be made, and, the, and of course, larger events have a certain level of complexity that needs to be addressed. And I'm really excited to share my personal story here with you on my journey in the Python and PyData communities. And I hope you can see something from my talk. And I'm also giving you like some insights. We're working on EuroPython and thoughts. We think we also need to improve uh, the EuroPython community in um, the future. So. Okay. No, okay, it's just slow. Sorry. I was just impatient. So, okay, this is me. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. These are some links on uh, uh, organizations I've been working with, contributed, and uh, this is this is my company, Codex Week. We have a partner. We are a boutique consultancy and focused on targeted innovation and transformation. So this is my day job. <laughs> and uh, in, uh, well, today, I don't want to talk about my day job and the experience here building data strategies and implementation with open, open source and large enterprises. Uh, today, I want to talk about my way into the community and take you on this journey. So how did I end up here giving this talk. So um, let me start in the early 1910. So the early, no, no, sorry, 2010. Sorry, that's, that's, that's just off by a century, no problem. In the early 2010, there were like many free things going on in the tech world. There was like data science, like a new frontier of dealing with data, like big data. I mean, big data was probably the media the, the most dominant. They were all like these machine learning was becoming a thing. Um, then there were like, also like machine, lear machine learning basically for the masses with like tools like TensorFlow, uh, the rise of Python, Jupyter Notebooks, and apart from Python, there was also JavaScript. JavaScript was suddenly back from the dead with Node.js and JavaScript was a big thing. And, and so, in, and also in the data space, there was not only like the, the the data tools we know from, from libraries, there was also like this whole no SQL, no SQL or not only SQL revolution going on with databases like MongoDB, Cassandra, and many others, like document databases and no SQL, which was like quite at the same time at the time. And 
where was I at that time, actually? And basically, there's now me in the middle of all this. Uh, my job is working in the digital music distribution. So working with Apple, working with Spotify, digital downloads, streaming, that's just like started to be a thing there. And I saw like the music industry, that's why fun fact, it's really good to give this talk actually in a, in a room that I call music hall. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's a really nice coincidence. Uh, because there's a, actually like a, a strong background here. Um, and so I was in the middle of the, probably the first industry, the music industry was the first industry was, which was fully digitalized. Yeah, so it's a tiny industry with a lot of attention, but it was like the first to be like fully digital. So and I, I knew I had to upgrade my tool set at that time because the tools we've been working for years did no longer give me a service. They gave me more, more headaches than making me more efficient. So I said, okay, I need another programming language. I need other tools for, for data, uh, for analytics. I always liked working with data. So uh, so I have a lot of uh, questions to answer. For example, okay, what about, should I use another database for like web scraping and getting other data in, um, like MongoDB or Cassandra? Which program language, Python or Java? And Java was way cooler than a Python. Yeah, that was like, yeah, that was a new Java script framework like every hour. And uh, yeah, so I had to make a lot of decisions. And of course, there were all my weekends I spent on course era learning data science, machine learning, all these new cool, thing, cool things. And it was also like, I think, a new era in um, very accessible education, like with the course era courses at the time, because all this was freely available, even like from elite university courses on data science were available. But it was like a quite busy time, uh, if I look in retrospect. So actually I choose MongoDB for like working for databases and I decided to go for Python, which I never regretted. Um, so my first Python conference was PyCon DE, which was like the, this is the German conference at the time. At the time, probably like four or five hundred people in each event still, because Java was still like the dominant language, C sharp, C++, whatever, Python was around, but not super popular then. And so I started to attend my first conference, and um, yeah, and from there it took me further. So um, my way into the community was like, after that conference in 2013, I attended EuroPython in Berlin. And EuroPython is like a, the European gathering of the Python community as an attendee. So here you see the BCC Berlin. Then you see like it's a great conference somewhere in this picture over there. This is me. Then there was a keynote by Travis Oliphant. You also see uh, non-focus, the old non-focus logo over there on the on the slide with Mike, my co-chair, like on, on the Python Software Verband on stage. So. I attended that, and also I decided to volunteer actually. So hey, I'm around, I don't know anybody, so they had like this open volunteer system, so I just signed up as a session chair actually, <laughs> yes. So, and the people I actually uh, was session chairing uh, were like close friends now, um, and so, and I jumped over my own shadow going into a Bavarian Bauhaus, like a Bavarian brewery in Berlin, because if you know, Bavarian Browns is in South southern Germany and Berlin is very north and actually they used to be arch enemies. So this is something like which is said, okay, this is kind of a contradiction, this is a very touristy thing to do, but these people I walk with now to the Browns, they look nice, well let's join them. And actually we had great conversations there. So I met Ian Oswald from Pileta London, I met Vincent Warmerdam, who is now the Spacey, um, like great people, and we had like very open discussions about what was going on and so uh, it was actually like I just stepped into the community and, and then there was also like this European society uh, meeting like the form and I said okay membership is free why not join so I um, attended the assembly and ended up signing up as an auditor because nobody was there was no candidate for an auditor so auditor is like hey checking the invoices is it like paid for the purpose and all the stuff. So I said, right, that's an easy task, I do it. I know that from other um, uh, non-profits I have worked before, uh, like rebuilding our local pride organization uh, when it had fallen apart. So I said, okay, this is like two day, two, two hours of work, I can do that. And I did not know where this decision would basically finally take me. <laughs> 
And there was this satellite event, High Data Berlin 2014. Here you see, uh, this is like, you know, Leah is also outside. Uh, so you see like people, it's like the first James. James is there on the podium. Uh, James Powell, you just saw in the opening. So this was like the first Pi Data in continental Europe, just after Pi Data in London. Um, and I was just there at an attendee. I had found out, okay, there is this data conference that looks like interesting. Let's just like join it. And I did not know where just attending this Pi Data would finally take me. <laughs> so, so let me just introduce what I did in the past 10 years a bit. So, as I, on the upper left, you see, well, let's start with down there. Um, I also was in the, in, in the MongoDB community. They did a lot of community work back in the days. I founded the local meetup. Uh, eventually, 2016, became Mongo Master. Uh, yeah, I spoke also in New York City at MongoDB World or MongoDB, but let's focus on Python. So, um, so I joined EuroPython as an auditor. And then I was, I knew people, I was on mailing lists, and EuroPython was rebuilding for the Bilbao conference in 2015. It was also like this, a, an organizational change happening. And so finally, I ended, I ended up being program chair of a conference in Bilbao, working with strangers I've never met on email, organizing a major conference. This is like one of these fascinating things in the Python community. And I said, okay, this can never work, but hey, why not? Let's do this. Um, so I was program chair for EuroPython for five years. Um, also served as a board member for two years. Then at EuroPython, people approached me, hey, what about the German conference, bringing this local to the area where I live? I said, do you want to join the team? I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I joined the PyCon DE team, was program chair, conference chair, and then we moved to, to Berlin, and joined forces with PyData Berlin, so we, we actually merged PyCon and PyData in Berlin to one large conference because we believe, also believe that also data scientists need to learn to program as we just like learned in Summit's keynote as well. Um, and yeah, and from there. And that was also like your SciPy, I think many of you know SciPy in Austin, so there's also a your SciPy. I just started helping a bit and ended up like being program chair for two years. Today I'm focusing on finance and admin. So, um, and of course, the, the community work was also contributed, like uh, I, I recognized, so I became a Python Software Foundation Fellow and a Euro Python Fellow later. Um, and but one important decision which I want to point out is was joining the Python Software Fellow as a chair. Because I saw a lot with like community organizing what also can go wrong and where are faults and where we waste, well, probably waste volunteers' time by not the best organization and back office services around so I decided okay there's a need for change and from my background because my first background was actually I studied the law and then was part of a music startup back in the days <laughs> and and so I also have like um, built like business build up business affairs and all a little bit of a contract and stuff and said okay we need to be better at this stuff but this is something unique I can also add to to the community by all this background knowledge from a totally different angle than and programming. So I decided to join the, the German Python Software Association and say, okay, let's get really better, let's rebuild for proper organization um, and stuff. Yeah, so some of the, I also want to join, tell, show you some of the enjoyable results here. So this is like how Euro Python looks, there's some, somewhere me in the middle, this is like last year's Euro Python, you see this like just like as PyData here, it's like very volunteer driven, uh, very open, diverse. Um, Community. This is PyData Sudwest, which I just didn't mention because it's just like the local meetup. But we just like a few weeks ago, we had Ines here from from, from Spacey and had like a big lecture hall in Heidelberg University. And uh, this is like working this. And this is like current PyCon DD in PyData Berlin um, here on uh, the BCC in Berlin again. Like this is just like taken from last year's conference. So. So now you know a little bit my story. So of course, I think people reached out to me because I, I probably wasn't bad at what I was doing. So people always ask me, hey, you want to join a team? You want to help? And I, I, it's, sometimes it's hard to say yes, because if I want to point back here, actually, I, I managed to, to leave EuroPython for two years. But after Corona, EuroPython, the team had changed. And, and they asked me, hey, can you, can you come back and help again with program? 
and I saw like, oh, the, the, the team did a great job and really made a change I was actually looking for, like, like I wanted for many years at Europe Python to happen, and they actually made it, so they built like a great community during COVID, COVID there. I said, okay, well, yes, I have the other conference already, but yes, and currently I'm also like a sitting board member there, and we're working on very similar reasons, uh, the very similar topics, administration, better, making things better for the community there. So, in the first part, if you, who's, who has ever contributed to a Python, PyData, or PyCon event as a volunteer? So who knows a bit? Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. So, so I think why is it so important that the community is organizing these events? So for, I think it's one of our success factors, actually, because we have a large, very active, and I cannot emphasize this enough, welcoming community. So if, you, if I go to other conferences or other organizations, you just go there, and if you don't know anyone, you will not get to know anyone. In the Python community, you basically join, and everybody says, hey, come on, let's give a hug, let's talk, let's join the community. I think that's one, one of the most amazing things there. And because, our content is community driven, it's community selected, it's very authentic. So I've hardly seen any bad talk, which was just like a sales pitch or something on adding extra value at these events. And apart from the program and the talks we see at, uh, here, I think it's also very important we have diverse and inclusive teams working on the grants program, understand the needs of people who apply to the grants program, and basically it's, it's, it's not just like set up, like if you look at other events, they say, okay, let's run a huge event. You hire people who are event experts for like running events, but they don't know anything about the content, and, and you end up with like a totally different thing. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that's a really strong thing because this everything we do is very authentic and real, and and it's pragmatic and it's 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 really driven by hey, how can we really help everyone to get here? How can we get people to learn and include them in community? But also, how can we provide like really top-notch talks about the latest stuff that is just going on? So these events are for everybody. I would always like to phrase it: this is like a conference run by experts for other experts, and a little footnote, or aspiring expert experts to be because we're inclusive and also very welcoming to newcomers. And we have a strong focus on um, the attendee experience. So it's not just, you know, you pay your ticket, you get it here, so like, hey, how can you make this enjoyable? How can you make this interactive? How can you also help people to get to know other people because also be aware of many people are like the first time you attend the conference there's imposter syndrome and if you know imposter syndrome yeah you you go into a conference and compare your knowledge with the knowledge of a large expert group and I think nobody can win that not even a Nobel Prize winner can win that yeah so um, so uh, so we, 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 we have like help people to open up like hey join have conversations with others uh, learn by talk to, to other people and we have a strong focus on diversity and inclusion and we spend a lot of time thinking about it and, and reaching out and, and make it make it like a good experience so how do these conferences actually work yeah so like it's, it is like, like a general pattern because there, there are differences from organization and conference to conference, but this is like the, I think like the, the general overview. So the conferences, there are volunteer committees that organize multiple parts of a conference. So there's, there's a program committee working on the program selection, the call for proposals, this, working with reviewers, just making um, a selection. Then there is a diversity diversity outreach program, a grant program to make the conference more accessible for students, like with reduced, this produced, not only reduced tickets, there's also a grant program, which is generally also mostly supported by the Python Software Foundation or the European Society on a focus who actually give an extra budget to say, okay, we can help people with travel and getting tickets, so if you cannot afford it, um, so and of course outreach. Outreach is very important. Working with other communities. So we very closely work with Pi ladies to say how can we make the conference 
a, a great experience also for women in tech for have pilots there with panels program a table and everything and of course have a code of conduct and look do we need to update anything on the code of conduct so we have like a, a, a jet up a setup to, so we have like a good experience and a respectful environment for everyone attending so then there's the video recording which is also like a very important part because people we publish these videos just like this video being recorded we publish this on the youtube channel of pydata and other people learn from that and it's not just a theory because or because i know i watch these talks actually one of the coolest experience was just last year we were i was with a colleague on the train to berlin and we were talking about the conference and somebody was just sitting opposite to us and said hey, what are you talking about i know this and i said yeah yeah we're going to a park on the pilot building we're part of the organization committee and he said yeah hi i'm, I'm from nigeria i watched these videos on youtube and actually they, they helped me become a machine learning engineer now i'm working in germany so this was like the best proof i ever had okay this is not just like a theoretic thing inside the community it really helps also like others to find and educate find the way into the community educate themselves on the, everything we do which was like this was quite rewarding yeah so of course we have communication website on-site volunteers session chairs like um that design swag handling out swag handling out badges which is what on-site volunteer driven of course in this conference chair so there are like multiple communities working together uh, focusing on one, making one part of the conference happen and this is all volunteers this is all in their free time not being paid just that contributing free time to the cause so and then there's organizers so organizers are in these committees and what do organizers actually do so let me like there's no like official definition of what an organizer actually is so this is my definition it's the best i came up with like a volunteer that takes on more responsibility and workload so somebody who is more like not just like for example like uh, somebody who helping on site is hey you you volunteer on the spot for a specific task and the uh, organize like organizers are more responsible for a specific part of the conference they work as a team they coordinate with other organizers or committees so for example program and video of course has to work close together because the program is actually being recorded um, you have to you have to coordinate you have to uh, do a lot of uh, project management you have to monitor and manage milestones uh, so uh, yeah it just sounds like work <laughs> like uh, because it's actually also work and you have to follow existing processes and guidelines but also rethink them okay is there also things we need to innovate change or add to this so we're in a constant innovation circle, like when we're building conferences, it's okay, there was a learning from last year, and we take this on for the, to the next year and constantly um, in, involved. So it's not like conference guidelines from 10 years ago are probably not like totally different, but there's a lot of innovation uh, that happened, happened in the past 10 years and to make it a better. Um, to make it better for everyone. So what do volunteers do? Just as I mentioned, volunteer help on specific tasks I would argue most volunteers are on site that but for example reviewers in the program committee who are just just doing reviews um, uh, uh, to help like to make uh, the, the program committee can make up its mind on what to select on um, uh, small like small and defined uh, work packages mostly on site um, and that's volunteers so but there's also organizations so what do organizations do because an event like this or like a large conference in Berlin it needs an entity uh, that actually is responsible for like all the legal stuff uh, the legal entity like running the conference somebody has to sign this contract with the venue which includes a prepayment guarantees and um, take care of administration sponsoring legal insurance tax and there's organizations like the python software foundation non focus of course for this event the python software Verband in germany for pycon the empire data berlin on in your side pie um, there's financial stuff to be sorted out reimbursements to be made for financial grant and um, um, uh, grant applicants and provide processes and guidelines and structure this conference can happen and also navigate risk and budget because of course in the past years we probably lived in the 
and the, and the, and the, and the land was plenty because like tech data AI was growing. We were just like a part of it, but we also have to prepare. Okay, what if uh, people, if com these companies scale down, as we experienced last year when Facebook like released a lot of people, and not just like growth, growth, growth forever, and we have to navigate this as well. Um, and magic, what's magic? I think magic is just like um, the thing that happens, like these like strangers meet and build committees and build uh, like these amazing things like this. So this is like another ingredient I just want to mention. I don't have an explanation for it. <laughs> so um, and there's also like challenges and opportunities there. So one challenge is the decentralized nature. So what do I mean with decentralized nature? The initiative often depends on very few people really driving it. So hey, let's do it. Let's bring PyCon DE 2017 to Karlsruhe. It was just like two people at Blue Yonder who said, oh, let's, let's apply for this. Let's do it. And let's bring other people on board. Um, so, uh, but then, of course, um, it's decentralized. We basically mostly run on Google Drives and documentation and teams constantly change very often. So even if there's documentation, it's probably unknown. <laughs> or it's lost, um, or it's maybe not documented because of course everybody's very busy, tired, we have meeting to committee meetings on the evening, so sometimes you probably do not the best documentation at 9 p.m. when you say, okay, finally my day is over, and let's, I'll do this tomorrow, and eventually you don't. Um, but of course, due to the centralized nature and not everything's documented, or it's like, it's a, many people and actors in these community change over time, which I think it's a, it's a good thing because it constantly brings in new blood, new ideas. It's always not like the same routines everyone. But the downside is very often it's reinvent it, it, it involves like a reinventing the wheel, <laughs> repeating mistakes or applying like have redundant setups also like for technical stuff. So so that's one challenge. And I think one of the Major challenges is in video workload for a few sometimes. And I think that's the most important part that needs to be managed um, to help to run a healthy uh, conference and community. So like the workload has to be balanced. Of course, you can have like a, const a, a conference run with like very few people with like heavy workload because of course, small teams are great. A small team can co coordinate really fast, yeah? But of course it has to have like a lot of workload as well. So. Probably uh, like large teams is not like the best solution. Yeah. So like Rumor says, Apple has like these small teams with five people. And sorry, Microsoft, thanks for hosting. But they also say like Microsoft had these like large teams, and that was Microsoft was slower in the past. I read that somewhere. Um, but thanks again for hosting Microsoft. Um, <laughs> so uh, so but yeah. So but the aftermath is that people you have like a really successful event. On the outside, like the, the the audience is cheering, great event, everything was smoothless, and people basically the day after the conference they burn out, ghosts leave, say okay, this is like one time experience only, and then they leave, and we have to do to do better there because often these things are uh, they, they they happen of course backstage, um, uh, and, and it's also not hard to be an organizer and complain to the audience, yeah, it was great for you, but I had a really bad time in the closing session. You don't want to act like that, but it happened. Um, and sometimes also crisis. Like to be honest, like the first Berlin conference after Corona was very hard for me. I, I think I have a big fur, but I was sick for one day. I was stress sick after the conference one day because we had to navigate a conference ten days after all Corona measurements had been like were like stopped just ten days before the conference, which gave us a lot of things to to think and to work. So, um, yeah, and, and, and of course, uh, you also have to take into account many people like to join committees, especially program committees. All this, like, it's like, sounds prestigious. You, it's easy to find people for that. But you probably and also have to put it like, um, not everyone is as reliable as you probably uh, expect, or they don't see the, the, the reason to be reliable because they also like have a different effect, uh, impression of what, what's, what's there and how important it is to be reliable and not say, oh, I cannot make this meeting, I will make it next time, and then it's like happening five, four times in a row. And this can be really toxic for a team which is working, working hard, and there's always like people like the free riders, yeah, and probably not on purpose, but maybe also on purpose, but 
it's 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 not really good for a team. So I think like for having like a good organization, like a good committee, the, the best committees I've always seen have like a really good team leader or two team leaders who are also able to say, hey, it's your volunteer. It's totally fine to say I have to leave. I have things in my life that came up, but just not always pretend to be there. And you don't. Yeah, just like it's totally okay. Sorry, something came up. I have to go. Um, not having other, keeping others like in the, hanging in the loop forever, um, because people also want to distribute and say, let's do this together and assign tasks, not just to get rid of the work, also to, to include, hey, we're doing this together as a team. So I think good leadership and team management is like people to to running uh, good conference um, committees. And yeah, then one really bad thing with events is. Um, from, it's different to software development where you can always have like a good reason, yeah, release date is delayed, we have to delay some stuff because it's just like software. The bad thing with events is you have a day to sell tickets and the, the door will open no matter what. So keeping the milestones, like keeping everything in time is also like very important to manage uh, because you, otherwise things will just pile up to the very end and this, and, 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 and um, working on all that will be like really stressful. Yeah. And uh, so, and of course, there's many diverse people, like with many different backgrounds and ideas working in these committees. So, but it's also really important to manage ideas and to learn how to respectfully manage ideas and, um, and uh, the um, expectations. Uh, so, new ideas are very important. Yeah. But, the and the community is very dedicated to other people's needs. So, but there also can be too many ideas, and also you have to be like, it's also like again communication required. You find a lot of people joining in committees, throwing their ideas what other people could do. <laughs> there, that's like common. I've seen this in many communities, political parties. You will never lack of people like having good ideas for you. But it's very important to say, learn to say no or require action plan, or yeah, the, what's the action plan, who's up for this task, and, and who's actually responsible, like, because, yeah, thanks for your idea, uh, but we also need to make this happen, yeah. And also, I, I saw like a certain tendency, of course, we're all engineers, engineers' <coughs> mindsets, of course, we have, uh, we tend to perfectionism, and it is the same perfectionism is the, is the, <laughs> is the enemy of the good, so sometimes good is just like, Good enough, yeah. Also, yeah, because like making like these extra five percent can can require like maybe double the workload and stuff like that. Sometimes, yeah, it's also it's okay to let go from time to time. Understand the perfection action. and of course, all this involves a lot of communication, um, and of course, administration and processes. So, how could you describe like an event like a PyCon event, which is basically a one-year event, what yearly event? So, and it's very often overseen and neglected that administration processes, yeah, if they, if they run smoothly, it can be a good experience for everyone, but if they don't run smoothly, yeah, there's a lot of like to be cleaned up, and it's very often overlooked how much things are happening in the background. There's hundreds and th probably thousands of tickets sold, invoices, invoices sometimes need to be rewritten, um, you need to file tax, especially European Union is very joyful because we have different VAT in every European country, although we have the European Union, and of course every European country has all tax regulations, how to file VAT and all this stuff, like VAT sales tax. Um, and there's, there's a lot of work to be done. Of course, if you have like the proper processes set up in the first place, this can run smoothly, but if it doesn't, it, has, it can be a lot of work to clean up. Um, and, uh, and, yeah. and I believe, this is why I basically remember, I said I, it was a deliberate decision also to join the German Software Association because I saw um, I saw failure also in organization and, I, and I, 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 I realized it's totally unfair to ask volunteers to contribute free time and basically screw up like paying reimbursements or sometimes a volunteer orders something on behalf of the organization and reminders um, ended up in their private email boxes. And I think this is a really bad experience and this had to be fixed, so we fixed it <laughs> with like providing better processes 
Um, and because it, we don't want to drive people out, like thanks for volunteering, but we also give you like a lot of trouble. I think that's a bad proposal. So, for example, we totally fixed that in Germany, and also like streamlined tasks and uh, uh, like really can enable an organization that's like, hey, this is the process, this is we work, this is like the this is like the time frame to expect like for reimbursements two weeks after the conference, like giving like everybody like um, a clear dates. One is what is going to happen. And also, but also make it happen that day because otherwise people will just throw you a lot of more communication. Hey, I'm waiting for this, and somebody has to answer that. And so, of course, I'm German, so everything has to work like clockwork. <laughs> so that's very important. It works like clockwork, or like as good as, 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 as good as you can get, and also like be transparent what's happening and these processes. Um, and yeah, it's as I know, like this is a year. Many of these events in the community are yearly events, so it's like a pop-up company or a pop-up store. You basically set it up for one, one year, and and then it has to work. And uh, so a yearly conference is like very often in EuroPython. We have a problem in EuroPython. This EuroPython society, we have more things to do than a conference. But eventually, when the conference comes closer, it sucks up all the attention and the energy, and it results in a high workload of board members. So. Um, so we realized, okay, there's a requirement. We can professionalize, outsource stuff, but then, of course, as a volunteer organization with volunteer board members, we said, okay, who's, who's the boss? Like, who even signed up this board to be a boss of somebody? <laughs> or, like, yeah. So, um, yeah, and then we have to also right, rethink uh, legal structures. So, there's a huge conference. We only have the European Society, which is like the heart, yeah, and what, what if the conference totally goes south for some reasons we probably don't control. We probably should have like a legal entity like also like shielding Europe society from that. And yeah, we hardly have any lawyers or people who in, in the community who can fix that, but we need to address it and start working on it. Yeah? Because we we also like Europe I mean, we are well funded from the conferences, and but these funds are not just coming from somewhere because we have donors. Uh, so no, this is this is money we have at our disposal because a lot of people contribute feel free time. So I feel, or well, we feel like very responsible how to handle these funds because it's not just other people's money, it's community money. So we have to be, act like super responsible with that. So, and also having all this consistency over the years is also like really hard. So, I think, yeah, so I think I've like so like yeah, skills. That's a good thing. Like skills. What skills do we need to run these conferences? Um, so the good thing is many talents are well, and many skills are needed. <laughs> there's a technical domain, uh, expertise in the domain, but there's also communication, leadership, teamwork, um, giving and receiving constructive constru uh, criticism is one of the uh, um, uh, skills you need. Uh, and uh, and what you don't need, that's why cross it out, like solo missions or endless fighting for own ideas. <laughs> This is something uh, which is not really helping. The, the good thing is you don't need to have like, okay, this is the checklist and I can join if I can do everything I can because the community is really great and it how, will help you grow on these different tasks. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, then there's committees. There's many committees you can contribute to and say, okay, I also have like, like design. Why not join that? Uh, I will skip that a bit because I'm um, a bit short on time, so let me close with like my final thoughts and future perspectives here. So um, the community has grown a lot and it's still growing. Yeah? And especially after the pandemic, we see, yes, uh, we have like a little pause there, but it's still thriving. Um, we have to optimize further um, to help others thrive. And our culture also could enable other tech communities. Because what we have is very, unique to the Python community, as far as I know. So, so first thing, we need platforms to thrive. So we need platforms that can optimize and handle growth on a high level. Like, and also like, help us keep like, the high level we have at this conference. So basically, a lot of, again, is back office, administration, project management, um, sharing experience, mentoring, like dealing with local requirements, um, finance, tax, but, or you can put it like all the boring stuff, <laughs> yeah. um, but also like have consistent replicable uh, uh, processes, 
governance and documentation. For example, like a grant program also needs a certain framework of governance. We say, who do we want to fund? Because very often this is, the decisions are just like made by, by a committee without guidelines. I'm not saying they make wrong decisions, but I think it's better to put like in a certain guidelines and framework, like give governance, this is like people we want to fund, or this is, these are like probably groups we don't want to fund. Yeah. Um, for, because they don't probably don't need it, like whatever. Um, there's, 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 there needs to be more governance and guidelines in writing. And, and only like a sta stable platforms in the background can, can provide this with ever changing teams over time, like to, to keep it like consistent um, uh, for the community. And also like mentoring and having like a network of people uh, in the past. So governance, yeah, I, I, I covered that basically already. Like, yeah, um, and also like the vision, yeah, why not offer this also like to other tech communities? Because there's a lot of like MLOps communities, like even like non-programming non communities, you could like see blue energy, like there's like a lot of things. So I think the culture we have established here can really help other technologies also thrive. And I think it would be great just to say, hey, we're here, and if you want to work like that, you're welcome, and we're happy to help. So, so enabling future organizers yeah, um, is actually, yeah, we're doing great, but we still can do better. That's just like, and all that together, like I've, I've thought a lot, as you see, I think a lot about community, how communities can be better. I'm a proud member of Python and PyData communities, but I also thought, okay, can we take this further? So I'm also like happy to announce Pioneers Hub. This is a nonprofit. I'm just like in the founding phase and process to actually say, hey, enable tech communities by providing stable back office from everything um, I've learned um, in the Python community and providing mentoring, governance, healthy help and help building healthy communities of others. And also, of course, interact with our community, because I think the best thing of Python community is always like uh, the cross pollination. Yeah, there's a web developer talking to an, ast an astronomer. Yeah, having different perspectives and finding magic solutions because they have like um, multiple backgrounds. So yeah, well, it's, it's going to launch in January. I'm, I'm really proud to do it. Was well, not an easy decision because you see from my community work, I have a lot of my plate already. But I said, hey, this is. I decided this is something unique. I can. I can also provide and bring to the table for the community, given my also business and legal background. And uh, so I said, yeah, let's give it a go. Um, yeah, and yeah, th thanks, thanks for attending the talk. Uh, yeah.